Hello wonderful human beings, Sheldon Evans here and in this week's video we're talking about how you can get bokehlicious looking images and if you're thinking, Sheldon, what does bokehlicious even mean? Then I have to say to you, just hold on, we've literally just started this video, I'm, I'm getting to that, I'm getting there. So bokeh refers to the out of focus areas of your image and as you can see today my face is in focus but the background behind me is all blurred out and lost in a sea of buttery smooth bokeh goodness. Nice. But before I show you how to achieve this look, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the like button at any point in this video if you find the info useful. Now to get this look, it all comes down to lens choice and you want to pick up a lens with a wide aperture. So I'm basically killing two birds with one stone here and answering one of the most common questions I get asked on both Instagram and YouTube. And that is, Sheldon, which lens should I buy? I've just got a new camera and I don't know which lens to buy. Now a wide aperture means that the lens can open up wide and let a lot of light in. And the amount of light your lens can let in is determined by the f number or the f-stop. So if you look on any of your own lenses or any of the lenses you're going to buy, you're going to see a little number next to the focal length. Now this might be something like 1.4, 1.8, 2.8 or whatever it might be on your lens. Now the smaller this number is, the bigger your aperture is going to be. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but that's the way it is. So to give you an example, here's an image shot at f1.4 and here's the exact same image shot at f14. Now, as you can tell, the background is much more in focus in the image with a larger F number. Generally, large aperture lenses can be quite expensive, especially if you're looking at Canon L series glass, you know those lenses with the big old red ring around them. However, there are some lenses that you can get if you're shopping or looking for a lens on a budget. And I'll link some of those in the description box down below this video. Two of my personal favorites are the 50mm 1.4 lens and the 85mm f1.8 lens. Now you'll notice that I mentioned two different focal lengths there and that takes us on to our next point, which is the focal length of your lens. Having a fast aperture isn't necessarily the only way to get a blurry background. If you're using a wide lens, say something like a 24mm lens and you're shooting at an aperture of f2.8, your background isn't going to be nearly as blurred as if you were to shoot the same object or the same subject at 85mm with the same aperture of f2.8. So the longer the focal length of your lens as well, the more blurred your background is going to be. Now the only downside to this is that you're going to need a lot more room between you and your subject because the longer your focal length is, the more zoomed in your image is gonna be. So you're gonna to have to stand further back to get the same composition that you would have liked with a wider lens. And that can make shooting indoors very difficult if you don't have a very big room or a lot of space to work with. If you're shooting outdoors, maybe you're shooting your friend in a forest, or you're just running around outside and you have a lot of room to play with, a longer focal length is gonna to be totally fine. That takes us on to the final point that we're gonna be talking about, and that is the background of your image. Considering that bokeh refers to the blurred out part of your image, which in most cases is going to be your background, I hope, it's important to take into consideration what's going on behind your subject and what the background of your image looks like. Like we spoke about before, the longer your focal length is, the more blurred your background's gonna be. The further your background is away from your subject, the more blurred it's gonna be as well. So if you can get your subject to move away from the background, maybe walk around and recompose your shot, you can get the background to blur out a lot more as well. Also, the busier your background is, the more noticeable the blur will be. So if you're shooting against a background with a lot going on behind the subject, it's gonna be a lot easier to notice the amount of blur that's in the image than if you were to say shoot against the subject with a solid backdrop or a solid color backdrop. To emphasize depth even further, you can try adding some lights to your background. As you can see behind me, I've got some lights there that are blurring out. You can try this yourself by going into the city at night and shooting with a wide aperture and you'll see that all the street lights and the street lamps will blur out and create these lovely bokeh balls in the background. Add to the depth of your image. So now that you understand what bokeh and aperture is, go out and get yourself a wide aperture lens and start shooting. And just like I've said before, feel free to tag me on Instagram, I'm happy to check out your accounts and check out the images that you're creating. But that's it for today's video and if you found any of this info useful, please don't forget to hit or tap that like button. Subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this or more content like this. I upload videos every single week. And as always, thank you guys so so much for watching, I really do appreciate it and I shall see you in the next video. Cheers.